we're going to be doing another tutorial on a Discord banner. I should note a couple of things. One, I am using Photoshop. This is a paid software. It costs around $20 per month if you're a student. Go upwards of $60 if you are not. A free alternative is called Photopia, P-H-O-T-O-P-E-A com or just search Photopia if the .com is not working for you. You see an example popping up on screen now as to how this Discord banner can be used. And generally, as long as you have image perms in a channel within a server, you can upload one of these banners. So without further delay, let's jump right into this tutorial. Let's start off go to File, New, and for the sizing, we want 900 by 450. This is going to be a lot more space than we actually need, but it ensures we have this extra space to work with should the need for it arise. First off, I'm going to do Control G and you should see popping up in the corner the hotkeys that I am using. I'm going to make this red by right clicking on the eyeball, double clicking on the folder name lets me change it. And I'm simply going to call this the base. I'm going to create another new layer. I'm going to drag it out, Control G once again. And this one, let's make it green, or I suppose yellow now, to keep ourselves organized, and this will be the text. So, starting off with the base, I'm going to come over to the left and my rectangle tool, and just drop it down, just like so. Now, I'm going to come over to Properties to actually change the dimensions of this shape. If you do not see the Properties window, go over to Window, Scroll down to Properties and make sure it is checked by clicking on it. Properties will then show up in this location where my mouse is currently hovering. And if you don't want it there, you can simply drag it from here and dock it to the sidebar. Now with Properties visible, I'm going to change these width and height dimensions. Make sure this chain is unchecked when you do this step. Now I'm going to make this 730 for the width. And as for the height, I will be doing 150. And that was looks like already pretty close to our random shape that we drew. As for the corners, I'm going to want zero pixels on them. For our main shape color, we're going to be taking this darker shade of gray and pause the screen if you need to, or pause the video if you need to, to grab that hex code. And it's 292929. 29, 29. Now I'm going to do Control J, this initial layer I'm going to call Backup, and then I'm going to hide it, and this new one I'm going to call the Base. Now I'm going to right click, Rasterize Layer, go over to the left where my pen tool is located, and with the pen tool selected, I am going to click at the top corner, making sure I am in this area, and I am zooming in by holding Alt on my keyboard and scrolling with my mouse. My mouse is currently plugged in, let me unplug that. And then just scrolling in while I'm holding Alt. And as you can see, it goes in and out. Now with the top clicked, I'm gonna come to the bottom and click down at the bottom as well. Making sure I go past the shape layer. I like this angle. Yep, this angle works. I'm gonna shift click, shift click, and then just click normally to complete the shape right click, make selection, click OK, and making sure we're on this layer we just rasterized, click delete. Now come over to your rectangle tool, right click on the outlined area and click deselect. Now I'll probably make this a bit, how should I say, more slanted for when you do it yourself to probably come from there to there. But in this case, I'm going to leave it as is. Now I'm going to come over to this left side, delete about that much, come back over to this right side, take about that much there, and let's do a Control J, Control T, go over to this top area, our little ribbon up here, add a minus to the width, and add a minus to the height, then click the check mark, come over to your move tool and drag this over while holding shift to remain on the x-axis and simply dock it over to the left side. Now right click and merge down. Now I'm going to return back to this right area 
I'm going to highlight over about that amount of the shape. And again, I'm going to do a control J to duplicate the area I just highlighted. I'm going to call this the left shape. I'm going to right click, go to blending options, go over to color overlay and make sure I am selecting the lighter shade of gray, which is 3C, 3C and 3E. Click OK, click OK, right click, rasterize layer style. Let's move it over to this right side, then right click, create clipping mask or alternatively, we can hold Alt and click between the two layers. Now, this isn't quite as long as I wanted, so what we can do is take this shape, drag it a bit over to the right, and you'll notice this is now exposed. To fix that, we can quickly come to our lasso tool, hover over the area, and once it's selected, do Shift F5, color, and then simply eye drop on the color of this left shape. Click OK, click OK, and we are good to go. Notice this did fill all this extra space, but because we are clipped, it is not going to be visible, so don't even worry about it. Now, just to keep myself organized, though kind of skipping ahead, I'm going to drag a new layer out, make it blue, and I'm going to drag my hammer in just so it adds a little more life to this. Actually, there was no reason for me to create a new layer because dragging the hammer in created a new layer anyway. But let's pretend that didn't happen. Go to blending options on our shape. And of course, you can use any other outline shape that you want. I simply chose a hammer for this example. After making it right, rasterize the layer style, do Control T, and then scale it down. Now, do note, because we uncheck the chain, if we just drag it normally, it's going to be resizing unproportionally. So in this case, make sure you hold Shift, and it will remain proportional. And then let's put our hammer right around there, making sure it is centered. Perfect. Let's just call this the icon. Now, returning back to this base area, I'm going to right click on the left shape. Go over to blending options, add a drop shadow with the settings of 17, 7, 5, and 9. Pause if you need to. Click OK. And then jumping ahead a little bit, I'm going to come to this text area, click down, and I'm going to write server rules. As for the font, we will be using this interesting name, one, the boss, Nui regular, whatever that means, and we'll be using it at 94 pixels. Do make sure to set the color to white, otherwise it will not appear. With our text down, we can just go ahead and center it. Now, depending on the length of your text, you can, of course, change the size of the font. 94 in this case worked best because it's longer, but if you just have server, you can of course bump it up to say 110 or 120 to help fill the space a little bit more. Text is done, icon is done, and as for the last step, we'll be taking this base. Let's make sure this is all lining up properly, and while you're on this duplicated base layer, do Control G, and let's name this to green. And this one, we will name the main Green. We're going to right click, go to blending options, go over to color overlay, click on the green to get our green, click OK, right click, rasterize layer style, go over to our move tool, and then while on the move tool, use your two fingers on the arrow keys of your keyboard to go down, right, down, right, and repeat that process until it is out about that distance. Now we're going to come over to here and we'll notice this left section is extending out a bit too far. So using our pen tool, we're going to click up here and line ourselves up with this diagonal line. So we'll click down, making sure we're lined up and of course click past the green and we are. So clicking around this empty space or extra space, we're going to complete this shape, then right click, make selection, click OK and then delete on your keyboard. Go over to the rectangular marquee tool, 
right click and deselect and the screen space is now lined up. Now, same thing with the left shape. We're gonna bring that over. Actually, no, I forgot that we added this big old blob to the end of it. So we're not gonna do that. Instead, we're gonna come over to this right side and take this bit of green here and duplicate it. If it wants to duplicate, there we go, duplicated, and let's see how we wanna adjust this. Let's do Control T and flip the width and probably the height, perfect. Then we just wanna line this up and then drag it over to about that distance. Then we're gonna do green left and Control J and name this green top Then drag this back over and make sure it is lining up. And that should be good. Let me just make sure this isn't too far out. Okay, one more down, one more over. So this left side is lined up, but this right side, as you can see, if we try to cut it, it's gonna be a bit of a blank space here. So again, we're gonna to come to our rectangle marquee tool highlight to create this extra space, do shift F5, go over to color, click the green, click OK, click OK. That is now filled in, so we have extra space to work with. Now going to our pen tool, we click across the diagonal, like so, click around to complete it, right click, make selection, click OK, click delete, marquee tool, right click, deselect, and that is now completed. To actually save this, highlight over the entire thing with your marquee tool, go to edit, click copy merge to file new create, click control V, and from here you can either do file, export, save for web, and these are the settings I'm using, and this helps compress the image size to make it easier to upload, or file, save as, and choose PNG. And with that, the tutorial comes to a conclusion. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please make sure to like and subscribe. Other than that, I hope you all have an awesome day.